Hello, my BMX nerd friends. Welcome back. I haven't called you guys nerds in a couple of episodes at least, but what's up, boys? This week on the show, we have Aaron Maxwell. He's a dear old friend of mine that I've lost contact with for, shit, five or six years. Um, And, I mean, spoiler alert, he had a journey being homeless, being on heroin, meth, all the stuff, getting arrested a bunch. But I always, like, you can see just... If, if when you listen to him, he's dude's a sweetheart and uh, it's a shame he went through what he did, but he's on the other side of it and I couldn't be more proud to uh, know him. So I think this will be an interesting one for you guys to hear the story. And he's, you know, badass bike rider and his part in Mediocre at Best is one of the best video parts, in my opinion. Um, I'll put some of those clips right here as I'm talking because they're just hammer saws. He's a ballsy dude he pushes through the fear and he has the bike control of somebody who was winning state championships as a racer i first met him through lashawn kobza and aaron and i spent a lot of time together working on his mediocre part hanging out partying doing drugs and then uh yeah there's a period of time where um we weren't in touch and i always kind of wondered how he was and what was what was happening and now that he's been out and been clean and living a much better life. I'm so happy for him, and I'm grateful that he came over to share this story. So I think you're in for a, a good couple of hours here, boys. I um, Yeah, I don't think there's anything I need to say. A simple session just happened today, so congrats to Garrett. Great job. Matt Ray with the little comeback third place. I'm very proud, very happy. Um, we'll be choosing the winner for the dance comp contest pretty soon. Shout out to Arie. He was fun to watch. Fucking... Joji, dude. Joji's the shit, huh? It's pretty cool. I'll uh, I'll be keeping my eyes out for Joji for ever now because that was way too fun to watch. Anyway, I digress. BMX is cool. Thanks for listening to this podcast. It's the best podcast in the world of all time, of all the greatest, you know? <laughs> all right, here's, here's Aaron Maxwell. No, no. Test, test. Titties, titties and testicles. How am I sound? I'm sounding good. How you sounding? You sound, you sound, sound good. You sound, sound pretty good. all right. Yeah. You sound good. First time right. podcaster. Yeah, let's go. Long time listener, first time caller. Hi, Aaron Maxwell. <laughs> um, All right. Let's see. How do we start? Usually by just saying hi. 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 That's how we're starting. Yeah. Hi, Bobby. Hi, Aaron Maxwell. It's been a long time. Dude. It has been a long how time. It? It's been pretty good. Started a podcast since the last time we hung out. Yeah, now you're on it. it yeah, I've been watching it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> um, so I guess yeah, people who listen to this are in BMX, and if they don't know who you are, how would you describe who you are in BMX? In terms of BMX, yeah, I guess nobody. <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> answer. But uh, no, really, how, why, if if somebody did know you, what would they know you from? Um, obviously, probably mediocre at best. Yeah, um, that was the first thing I ever actually filmed. Um, then had a little part in Forever Rolling. Did that little, uh, little video for Sabrosa at one point. Yeah, that's cool. Then a uh, couple clips in Lightworks, dude. And that's about it. It's a good career. You know? Good yeah. career. Yeah. Yeah. You said, so mediocre was your first video part. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But you had been writing for how long? At that oh, point, years, dude. Yeah, I started writing when I was like five. Yeah. Tell me, tell me your, tell me your story from the beginning. Story, dude, from the beginning. Um, How do you get? What happens at five? Yeah, I, I don't know. Where do you, where do you start that video or that that story? Where do you start your story? Well, I, do I get taken out to the BM, the BMX track for the first time? Nice. Um, which is like probably like a weird experience, right? Like definitely an abnormal one from uh, like what your average person would experience, right? Mm-hmm. It's like that first night I got taken out to the BMX track. Um, remember we're sitting uh it's at chandler bmx and we're like we're sitting on the grandstands you know and there's a part of the track it was called the bonsai right so it's like a big double dude and i like dropped down underground a bunch and then came back out you mm-hmm. know big scary right big scary thing especially at like five bondi bonsai bonsai yeah that's yeah, what they called it um and uh we're sitting right there in front of that jump, dude, and some kid had jumped it, and, you know, like, he fucking went over the bars, dude. He broke his collarbone, and, like, ambulance Fun. came and got him, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, it was gnarly, right? And um, I remember my dad being like, fuck, dude, like, he's not going to want to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, 
but at that point, dude, like I had already, you know, I'd already been like set, like making, you know, stacking logs in the front yard, dude, with some like wood on it, and, like jumping this like weird bike that I had, yeah. you know, um, like already had like the obsession, right? Like was already was already in it, mm -hmm. and uh, so like, what do you think? You know, I was like, fuck, when can we come back? Nice. You know, when <laughs> yeah. do I start? Yeah. <laughs> And that looks fun. To, yeah, just like it took <laughs> off from there, you know. I want to break my collarbone. Yeah. Put the mic closer, if you don't mind, to your mouth. Oh, a little closer. Right. Yeah. We're looking good on the levels. Sounding right. good. So Ooh. first time was a fucking, there's somebody gets hurt and carted off to the ambulance. And yeah, you're like, like sign well, me up. Yeah, broke <laughs> off. I was like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. You do. You have had that kind of fearlessness, which is pretty badass. Um, and just the bike control that comes with, like, obviously racing when you're five years old because then you just know your way around a bike and everything it's pretty crazy yeah. watching you like i would i remember filming you and watching you pick up the bike after not riding for six months and just everything's all still there it's pretty yeah. pretty crazy you know? yeah and like even uh it's weird now like even you know after fuck years of not riding right and like coming back to life yeah. you know um, yeah going to the skate park for the first time and like there yeah it's know? crazy dude. <laughs> yeah, it's just there dude. it never it never left yeah it's just like gone anywhere. The bike. uh okay cool so we get into racing and then what's what's kind of the next step in that path um like, shout out dad for getting you racing that's pretty I think cool like a little like little weird uh arizona history right like the dude that um so at the time chandler bmx was owned by this family the porzios um lucas like lucas porzio right yeah and uh that's the dude that taught me how to ride my bike you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember... Uh, Lucas Porzio taught you how to ride your bike. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, like, that, the first time that, like, they introduced me to him, right, my dad's like, hey, we found this guy. He's going to, like, teach you how to jump and, like, how to, like, do, you know, how to fucking ride the track, you nice. know? Um, he's like, it's this dude right here, you know? And uh, he gets into the gate backwards, right? And... Uh, what does that mean? I don't know race so stuff. So, like, the starting gate? Yeah. You know, it drops, and then they go down the hill yeah. or whatever. Well, like, everyone, you face forward, right? And yeah. Right he, did, he went normal, backwards? Right. He gets in the big gate backwards. Oh. And he's fucking sitting there backwards in the gate. Um, and he fakied down the hill, dude, all the way to the first roller. Sick. Half cabbed over the roller. Sick. Um, Obviously on a cassette, too. And turned around and, like, won the race. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's cool. Um, <laughs> That's a flex, dude. Yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah I'll start this sick, race backwards, right? boy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But like I saw that and I was like, I'm not getting in that gate backwards, yeah. right? That looks crazy. Like I'm not doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then he just he came up, dude. He introduced himself and like, dude, he fucking taught me how to ride my bike. That's sick. What do you remember learning first? Um, well, like the basics, right. you know, going through the rhythm section, like learning how to pump and like, uh, you know, when you're riding around the turn, dude, you keep your inside inside leg up you know so your pedal doesn't clip the ground and yep. like you die um then like teaching me how to manual right figure out how to pump and then it's like using your legs to manual through manual through jumps and shit like that it's like then, six uh, seven years old learning how to manual and yeah ride your bike that's yeah, sick yeah and um uh, then he taught me how to jump we found like some little step up out of the last turn and um I, go fast dude, and lean yeah, back exactly right <laughs> yeah he just how do you describe top. jumping as a, as a professional jumper, how would you tell a kid, okay, here's what you got to do? To just fucking go. Let it just go. Yeah. <laughs> figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out, dude. Go fast. <laughs> yeah. Go fast, dude, and just let it fucking throw you. Yeah. Right? And then they get used to that that getting Because it doesn't... Right? Like, and, like, figure out how to control that. Yeah. And I legit never really learned how to jump stuff. I made it over the box at Glendale Park, like, once, and maybe more than once, but... yeah. I jumped dirt jumps when I was a kid, and then I ate shit, and then I had to go to basketball practice, and I was all bloodied up, and I was like, I'm never jumping again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so dumb, dude. Yeah, and that was, you know, that was the the experience, right, is um, I would try, right? I'd fucking be get nose melted. heavy, dude, get thrown over the bars, and yeah. like thrown off the side of the track, and like start crying, because I'm like, fuck, it's six years old, that <laughs> shit hurt real bad, <laughs> yeah. you know? And um, he comes, picks me up, dude, dusts me off, and like, Tells me to do it again. Nice. You know? Yeah. Um, that's huge. That's takes, what it is. Takes a little bit, right? But I yep. fucking get back on, dude. I go around and like I die again. Yes. You know? Yeah. Um, 
I think about that a lot. I'm like, it just, it, you have to be willing to get hurt in order to progress in BMX, yeah. which and at like this point was, I'm not, I'm no um, longer willing to. And like, he was the dude that had like told me pretty early on, right? Like you want to learn how to like jump your bike and like how to like ride your bike. You better learn how to fall as well. Yeah, for real. You know? Yep. Um, and like that first time, dude, like trying to learn how to jump that step up too, is like when I started learning how to fall. Yeah. You know? That's what's up. Tuck and um, roll. Yeah. <clears throat> Who do you think was the best faller? That you ever saw. Best faller. You know what I mean? Like Gabe Brooks, for example. Dude. Would tuck his flunky. tuck his neck yeah. and just fucking he's somersault so out of everything. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. I'd probably give it to him. Yeah, he's yeah, pretty he's pretty up there. Him, for dude. real. Um so that's dope. I was I was gonna ask you like comparing jumping to bunny hopping, because that's I think a common mistake is people treat a lip and still want to bunny hop off of it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. but you just have to let the bike yeah its thing. you just gotta yeah i mean like as far as jumping right it's like just knowing your speed and like being able to like read the trajectory that that fuck that the lips gonna send you yeah you know and like just feeling it out and the, right? it's the just lip doing the work it happen, it's not you yeah. You know? yeah yeah i mean there's a little bit that you have to do right right especially like i mean with racing right like uh you're not letting that lip just throw you how it's supposed to right like you're manipulating it and trying to stay as low as you can yeah and, like get, push through you know, it yeah. yeah push through it whatever yeah you start to figure that out, but, um, so we're racing now we're seven, eight, nine, whatever. Um, are we starting to see any success as a racer? You got a bunch of trophies at home or what? I did. Yeah. Had a bunch of trophies, dude. Um, had one like congrats champion. Yeah. Champion of the world. Had some plug state championships, a couple state championships. Um, How does that work? Is it solo for the stuff? Are you on a team? I don't think there's racing teams, right? No. Yeah. 100%. There's There's teams. teams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So what were your trophies individual or team stuff? State just, champion, dude. Yeah, dude never, like, how did I never like, know that? Good job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, I mean, you get trophies, dude, just even at the local race. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just Friday, you know, Friday night, Saturday night races, you first, second, third place, you get a trophy, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then, like, as I start to progress, right, you know, I get, like, first little, like, bike shop, you know, bike shop sponsor, you know, I'm on the bike shop team, and, like, we start going to nationals. Which then, bike shop? Uh, the first one was Bike Chalet. Bike Chalet. Yeah. Never heard of them. Bike Chalet. Yeah. Uh, they're not really around anymore. They yeah. might have. I don't know. Shout out Bike uh, Chalet Psych. Shout out Unity Ride Shop. Go to unityrideshop.com. <laughs> <laughs> We're sponsored uh, by Unity. We're out here. The podcast yeah, is yeah. sponsored, dog. Let's right, go. Shout uh, out Unity. Anyway, yeah, shout out. Bike, bike Chalet. Yeah, Unity is killing it, honestly. Um, bike Chalet. How old were you when you got sponsored by the uh, Bike Chalet? I was like six years old, dude. That's wild. So yeah. it's through your dad the sponsors come in right uh or mom it's kind of at first dude like because like bike shelly was like the first spot that like we bought that's like where i bought my first racing bike yeah you know and I mean? when you say you bought it you didn't buy it your oh, parents yeah, bought it yeah, parents <laughs> bought it. yeah, yeah dude, <laughs> six years old six years old i don't got no money hey sponsor my kid yeah. which um, is cool so like we start you know um we're showing up to the bike shop dude and like getting nicer parts and like buying leathers and helmets and whatever and like they're what are out leathers? of the track uh the, like your jersey and your pants okay got it yeah. yeah um and like they're going out to the track dude and they're seeing me ride and like i'm progressing like pretty quickly you mm-hmm. know um and they just throw me on the team right they just make cool. a little local team dude and they throw yeah. me on right and, uh get my first little sponsor yeah and then uh yeah dude we start traveling and like going to nationals and uh my parents had owned and operated a silk screen printing company like since I was extremely young and they started like printing all the t shirts for for the ABA, the mm-hmm. American Bicycle Association. All the t shirts? Yeah, for all the nationals and yeah. like everything That's like that. That's a big contract. Yeah. Big. Yeah, yeah. Big deal. Sick. You know? Uh, it was great for the ego. Yeah. Right? The little fucking seven year old ego that I had. Yeah. And uh My parents make all the t shirts. Yeah, you <laughs> run around dude, all the time, you know. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by Dance Comp. Matt Ray just got third place at Simple Session wearing a Dance Comp shirt, and we have the Matt Ray giveaway going going on right now, so that's pretty cool. And if you want to get 15% off of your next order at dancecomp.com, use promo code CANODE and uh, save yourself a little, some money. Thanks, Dance Comp, for sponsoring the show. Yeah, dude, and then it just kind of like takes off from there, right? Started like going to nationals and like uh, started getting like some factory sponsors and like. Uh, doing that yeah you know i never really found like a whole lot of success in racing you know um what would success even look like what like what 
Yeah. What is success? Well, dude, I mean, I guess, racing? I mean, I guess you could say I was pretty successful, right? Like, um, flights were getting, you know, flights were getting paid for, dude. Bikes were paid for. Like, yeah. Uh, hotels, like all that shit was paid for. You That's know pretty I mean? cool. So, um, we start, start traveling around, dude, and like doing that, you know? Yes. Uh, I had like done pretty well in like a couple world championship races or whatever. Never won them or anything, but like got into the mains. You yeah. Know? Um, of the world championships. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. It's not as crazy as like but it that's is the now. Whole world, you know what I mean? Dude. No, yeah. it's ABA world, dude. It was like <laughs> America. Okay. You know? yeah. They just called it the world. Yeah. We're the captains <laughs> of the world. Um, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dude. Uh, and like I just started fucking meeting people and like traveling and. Um, just getting better on my bike. Yeah. You know, uh, I was never the fastest kid. That's for sure. Right. Um, we get into a rhythm section and like, I'll pull you. Right. And I don't have to pedal there. Yeah. You know, but, uh, I definitely wasn't like the fastest dude around the track by any means. Yeah. You know, when does your first taste of freestyle come into it? Uh, dude, it was always kind of there. Right. Um, it just wasn't really like in the forefront of the mind. Cause like, Racing was like the first, like the first love, right? Yeah. And um, that's just like where all my attention was focused. But like, dude, we just loved riding our bikes, right? So like, we'd be at the nationals and like, in between motos, you know, like go find some fucking random hill of dirt, dude, and like make a dirt jump out of it, or like go down the street, dude, and find some like some find some stairs, dude, and just like start jumping down them. Yeah. You know, like we were just, um, just a bunch of little kids do like riding like just like yeah. ride our bikes dude so you don't like, have to think about it if too we were much. like at the track dude or um at the hotel dude we just got on our bikes dude we went out and we found something to ride yeah that's you know? cool yeah do you remember like uh first kind of i don't know video or photo in a magazine that got you stoked to switch to just doing tricks instead of racing um I guess the, the a different way to phrase that was it like, would be how did you transition from race to just being freestyle? Like when did racing end for you? Uh, racing ended probably around 16, 17 years old, maybe, you know? Um, Why? Broke my back. Oh, that'll got, do it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> got, look, you know, my back uh, is broken. It's yeah, spinal. like fractured like a couple vertebrae in my back, dude. Like compressed all the discs, tore a bunch of cartilage. Like, Fucking yikes. And shit, I didn't you know, know this. Yeah. yeah. What? And uh, at I that time, it's like, you know, I was like in art school and like drawing a lot and like pretty obsessed with tattoos at that point. Yeah. You know, um, had like had made the decision due to like a very long time ago at that point that like I was going to be a tattooer. You nice. Know? Yeah. And uh so that injury happened and um i had been like talking to a guy about like maybe possibly getting my first apprenticeship when i graduated high school and like direct my attention kind of got shifted that way for yeah a while, for sure you know yeah yeah and then uh so i go through my first apprenticeship dude i started the day after i graduate high school and um about 10 months later do i get fired from that because i'm young as fuck mm -hmm. right i'm just like this like angry like punk rock hardcore kid and, like um a lot of angst i'd rather like go to shows dude and like hang out with my friends than like show up to uh, show up to work yeah you know? <laughs> he didn't understand work yet. Um, yeah dude, i had no work <laughs> ethic dude i had no you know what i mean i just like wanted to hang yeah, out with my that, friends man. dude like talk to some girls and like fuck you know what i mean yeah. like hang out um and i thought this i, I was under the impression dude like that's what fucking tattooing was, right? Like right. all the tattooers I'll do it when that I, feel I knew, like they it. were like also fucking like angry punk rock hardcore kids and like um, they went to shows, dude, and like they tattooed, yeah. you know? So um, my attention was just a little too caught up in like going to shows, dude, and like hanging out, dude. I didn't understand like the amount of work that it actually takes, dude, to be a successful tattooer yeah. at that point in time, you know? Yeah. So I get let go from that... Uh, I get let go from that apprenticeship, dude, and, like, feeling pretty fucked up and, like, not really knowing, like, what to do or, like, where to go or, like, whatever else. And um, at the time, I think, uh, I think Def Grip was, like, a pretty popular, mm -hmm. pretty popular, like, website, dude. Their yeah. blog was dope, you know? 2008, 2009. Yeah. And I hop on, you know, I'm, like, fucking hopping on Def Grip and, like, 
the come up is like starting to become a thing a yeah. little bit. Okay, so like 2006, 2007 ish. Because yeah. wait, you said you're 17 or something around this point. So yeah, yeah. At this point, I'm 18. So it's like 2008, 2009. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, dude. Like, fuck. Get up another bike, dude. Nice. Get back on my bike and like, did it. Yeah. You know, just got another bike and like started fuck going to the skate parks and messing around and having uh, fun. Having fun again. What bike did you get? Do you remember? Uh, so at the end of, um, at the end of racing, I was riding for a company called Supercross and, uh, they had built, they had like started like trying to make street frames. Okay. You know, so Supercross like, street. Let's yeah, go. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and dude, it was a fucking dial little frame. <coughs> yeah. I love that bike. They're all I the same. A lot of, yeah, dude, yeah. I learned a lot of stuff on that bike, dude. Cool little bike. Um. I ended up snapping the head too, dude, and had to get another one. <laughs> okay, they're not all the same. <laughs> yeah. I'll do, I put it through a beating, right? Nice. Like, I've never been, uh, me and bike parts, dude, have never been, like, the best of friends. Yeah, you know? for real, though. Yeah. And at this point in time, like, going to the skate park and stuff, who are you hanging out with? Who are you riding with? Um, so I had a, I had met a kid in uh, in high school, um, this kid, Tolly, and uh, we just started riding. Do I know Tolly? Yeah, Tolly Molina. He's, uh, he, he was in I Got Work, and... Got hair down to here. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Curly hair and shit. Yeah. Um, he hung out with Derek Riggs a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know Tyler. So uh, show up to the skate park with him, dude, and he starts introducing me to everyone, dude, to Derek. Sick. And, yeah. Mr. Riggs. Yeah. Shout out Mr. Riggs. Yeah. So, like, very early on, dude, it was like, it was pretty much just like Tolly and Derek. Yeah. That we go out and ride with. Cool. You know? <laughs> and Marcus. This kid, Marcus. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marcus. What's his last name? Brown? No. Marquise? No. Not Marcus. Not Marquise. Marquise. Marquise had always been around, too, yeah. though. He was always at Chandler BMX, too, yeah. growing up. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, Marquise was sick. And what skate so parks like are you going pretty to? Good, uh, I'd already, like, had, like, known, like, a handful of people, you know, so I could yeah. show up to the skate park and, like, I, you know, yeah. Reed? a handful of people that I knew. Are you going to Reed? Reed? Went to Reed a lot. Um, yeah, I remember, like, going to uh, some jam that they threw at Reed. You're trying to get bikes let in there. Nice. You know, when I was like, yeah, I remember that being your thing. Yeah. It was like super young. Yeah. Got arrested there. It's so crazy that I remember those days of being in, a, in Phoenix. It was like we were fighting for our rights to oh, yeah, go to a skate park. Yeah, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, all that was fun. Cool. Fucking get back into freestyle and I don't know, figure out the tattoo part of your life. I, w- I would imagine, because spoiler alert, you had a, you had a journey with opiates. Um, mm-hmm. But I imagine this back injury was probably a little taste of what it was, of what See, that's opiates the weird felt thing, like. Dude, is like it wasn't. There was no painkillers at that point. Really? Like I didn't get any. any no nope. broken back and no painkillers. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good for you. Um, like, uh, you know, I have like a pretty, pretty lengthy like family history of like with addiction. Yeah. Right. Um. So, like, it's strange that I had the journey with that that I did. Because, like, for the longest time, dude, like, ever since I was a child, right? Like, when I grow up, dude, like, I'm not going to be a drug addict. Yeah. You know? Like, I fucking refuse. Yeah. You know? Um, Damn. And yeah. remembering that as you're so in like the throes of being a drug addict and just thinking, like, fuck, yeah. I said I wasn't going to But, like, dude, there this, was, like, you know? times yeah. where I did have experiences with it, right? Like, I remember when I was 12, dude, I snapped both my jaw joints in Reno, Nevada. Um at like the silver dollar national or something like that dude you know uh woke up from surgery you know, jaw like my, joints yeah what yeah, do you mean snapped both of them what yeah like went over the bars sides? dude shattered like the whole full face of my helmet right and like that was a weird crash Bro- yeah, yeah that's crazy that was a weird crash dude i like went over the bars on this double um smacked my face dude bounced up you know i'm fine and, like good <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm fucking good dude that was <laughs> That sucked, but yeah. I'm good. Bro, bro, bro. Uh, his jaw's falling yeah, off. Yeah, dude, walked over to the side of the track, dude, and, like, uh, took the pieces of my helmet off and, like, saw a bunch of, like, blood coming out of the helmet, you know? And, like, the side of my face is wet. And I'm like, what the fuck, you know? And uh, hands just, like, full of blood, dude, and, like, just passed out. Fun. Yeah, just passed <laughs> out. Um, woke up, dude, and saw, uh, saw a couple friends, like, watching me on the stretcher. I think, uh, yeah, it was... Um, my best friend Nico, dude, LaShawn was up there looking down at me. Um, and this kid, uh, Sean Lechner, Bobo, they're all three like on the top of this arena, dude, like watching me get rolled off on the stretch here, dude. I see him like as I'm like, the last <laughs> thing I see, I go in this tunnel, dude, like before I pass out again. Yeah, crazy. Um, 
Yeah, and I was like in and out of consciousness for like the next two days because of that. Wild. Kept like waking up, you know? Yeah. And like I'm everything good. still sucked. Yeah. And like Vi's <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Not uh, yet. But yeah, dude, I was like wired trapped for like two and a half months. And uh, I woke up from surgery, dude, and like had a cool little little button, button. you yeah. know? Gave me all the morphine that I wanted. Yep. And like I remember liking it at that time, dude. Yeah. But like, you know, didn't know what the fuck was going on. Uh, but other than that, you know, it really wasn't my, a whole lot of experience, dude, with like drugs and alcohol. Um, like a little dabbling, you know, right. fucking, you know, 12, 13, smoke some weed or like uh, show up to some like random house party, dude, and like drink and like do a little bit of coke. And then like I remembered that I didn't want to be a drug addict, you know, and I found punk rock and hardcore and there's like yeah, a bunch and you of straight, can be edge straight edge, edge yeah. in there, you know, and like... Um, fell in with that crowd for a bunch of years, which is like extremely helpful, yeah. you know? Um, and then uh, got away from it. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to think about the, like the pullback effect. Like I, I didn't do anything until I was 18. No smoking weed, no drinking, no sex, but it was like pulling back a rubber band. And then as soon as I turned 18, I was like, it's off to the races. Like I oh, fucking yeah. do everything. Yeah. So that's kind of like, hundred percent. I feel like when I have a kid, I, I'm, I don't know, the best route probably isn't like stay away from everything at all costs. It's like, you, I don't, I don't know, dude, that's a scary thing to try and think about like coaching a kid to understand and navigate this shit. Cause I think everybody kind of just has to figure it out for themselves. I'm jealous oh, of the yeah. dudes that have never dude, touched there's, anything. Uh, there's no way to like, there's no way to stop it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, there's no way to avoid it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. People always like get into like whether or not they think like uh, drug addiction is like genetic or if it's environmental or whatever. Right. Dude. Nature like, versus nurture. There's a thing. little bit, you know, it could be either or. Right. Yeah. I don't think any of that really matters. Yeah. Right? I, I agree. I think it's like up to the, it's up to the person. It takes a little bit of, I don't know. <coughs> That's a yeah. whole whole different ball. Yeah, game. dude, it's a rabbit hole. Dude. So we'll get down that one later. Well, yeah, we'll get there. Uh, <laughs> so we're I don't know eighteen. We're riding skate parks now. We're tattooing. Fucking not win. tattooing yet. What? So I had lost that apprenticeship. Dude, didn't start tattooing. Um, and now I'm uh, fuck riding bikes, dude. And I'm like working at my mom's screen printing shop and like going to shows and talking to girls and like hanging out. Yeah, sick. You know? Yeah, living the dream. Yeah. And then, uh, when do we meet? And how do we meet? We meet. Uh, we meet right around in this time, right? Uh, we met after Lashawn had moved down here from San Diego, and uh, I think we do. We went to go get burritos, dude. And you showed up to Los Favoritos. Nice. Yeah. We met at Los Fives. Yeah, cool. Dude. Eating yeah. California burritos. Yeah. Yeah, with Lashawn and. Uh, talking about riding and stuff, dude. And like you were talking about, uh, you had this idea for a video and you're talking to LaShawn about a part. And like yeah. LaShawn introduced us and you're like, oh, you ride, dude. Come get a couple clips. Yeah. You know? um, and it kind cool. of started out as like maybe getting a couple clips. Dude. Yeah, and for the friend like, section or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then we got a couple clips. Dude, and then you went in. You fucking film the whole part. Dude. Fuck yeah. yeah. That's exciting. So yeah, I remember these days because we we're dabbling. I was dabbling with you. At this mm -hmm. point in time, just the kind of same. It seemed typical to just try shit out in your yeah. 20s. You yeah, know? you're young, dude. And like at that point in time, you had no idea what was like really going Dangerous. on. Or like yeah. what we were dealing with. You yeah. Know? The potency of this addiction that would come. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> absolutely, dude. Completely blindsided by it. Right. Yeah. No idea what was like, what was going on. You don't know until you're in the thick of it and you're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in here, yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> How do I get out? Yeah, for real. Uh, well, tell me about it. Like this, this is kind of the beginning of the your your um, drug journey, if you will. Yeah. Um, so, this episode is brought to you by Unity Ride Shop, located off Forty Third Avenue in Bethany Home in Phoenix, Arizona. Unity Ride Shop is one of the greatest bike shops of all time, and their support means the world. And they help the clips get made by uh, creating the funds that I can pay editors. So that's pretty super awesome. They host a bunch of events and jams and they sponsor some really cool local riders. And uh, yeah, killing it. So shout out Randy, shout out Unity. Go to unityrideshop.com or just stop in to 43rd Avenue in Bethany Home and say hi in person. We, uh, we were out filming 
So like I like kind of dabbled a little bit, right? Yeah. Like done a couple pills here and there, whatever. Um, but we were out filming a clip one night with Drew and gee, I can't remember who was there. There's a whole little handful of people there, yeah. right? Uh, it was that one weird little statue, right? It like had this like weird C cutout thing. Okay. Um, and I tried like jumping into it and manual and to like 180 out of it, right? Cool. I can't remember what Drew was trying on it. He's like trying to like feeble in it and like fucking hard okay. on out of it or something. On like campus that. or what? Near campus. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone now, dude. It's completely gone. Okay. It's like a weird little fucking thing. Yeah. A, a Drew thing. Yeah. You know, a super fucking interesting setup, dude. It's fun to ride. Uh, but I tried to jump in and manual it and like got the anti hop on the kicker of it, you know, and like got thrown over the bars and separated my shoulder. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I went home that night and uh, it was actually, dude, the night before. Um, it was the night that I finished my apprenticeship, right? Like I finished my apprenticeship for tattooing. The next day is supposed to be my first day as a professional tattooer. Yeah. And uh, I just separated my shoulder. Yeah. You're right one too, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I'm fucked. Yeah. Because right? like they've been telling me for a long time, like, uh, you should probably chill out like on the way that you ride your bike. Right. Yeah. Right? Like you're about to have this profession that you need your hands for. Yeah. And, like you have to show up and like be a Damn. professional, you I'd know? Be, you were probably tormented um, by this. Then. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and like heavy. the the ego, right, is like not going to, it will not allow me to show up to work my first day as a professional tattooer and be like, hey, can't tattoo. You guys were right. Yeah. You know, uh, fucking got hurt. Yeah. You know? Um, so what'd you do? So my next door neighbor at the time, old man Harvey, uh, he'd been trying to sell me these pills for a really long time, you know, and I was kind of blew him off. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go talk to old man Harvey about these pills that he's got, dude. And, uh, I take them. Right. And like, I think at the time we were dabbling, dude, we weren't really like snorting them or anything. We we're just kind of popping them, right? And it explained, it gets explained to me that they work like way better if you snort them. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe him. Yeah. Um, it makes sense. You know, I snort this pill for the first time and like uh, the pain in my shoulder stopped, dude. And like for the first time in my life, dude, I stopped tossing and turning inside of myself. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. And, just. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, yeah, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Yep. And, uh, yeah, dude, fucking finally felt comfortable, you know? And uh, I spend the next month or so, like, fuck, doing these pills every day, right? Wake up, do one. Uh, do you remember, like, the milligrams, what we're doing? Oh, yeah, they're the 30 milligram. Okay, like, yeah. Little fucking the blues. Yeah. yeah. Before the fentanyl blues. Yeah. Right? These were the real right. ones, yeah. Um. But, uh. Yeah, dude, so I spend the next month taking these, dude, until my shoulder uh, stops hurting and I can, like, start showing up to work like a normal, decent, sober human being. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but, like, I've been taking these things, dude, for a month now, every day, multiple times a day. Yep. And uh, had no idea what, like, opiate addiction was, dude, or, like, yeah. what... Uh, what it was like to yeah. be Yeah, why am I sweating or, like, and nauseous? Like, go to <laughs> yeah. withdrawal or, like, yeah, yeah. you know? So, um... I uh, I had this realization that my shoulder stopped hurting, dude, and I didn't need these pills anymore, you know? And I tried to stop, and uh, I go about my day, right? I wake up, dude, there's one left on the, on, the, on the nightstand for me, you know? I don't need that. I'm good, Yeah. right? Um, I'm done taking those, right? Because, like, I'm not a drug addict, dude. I don't want to be a drug addict. Yep. I'm fucking better than that, yep. you know? Uh, go about my day. And, like, go to the skate park, you know, it's my day off, and uh, I'm going to spend my first day off these days, off, you know, my day off, right, mm -hmm. and get better, you know, get back to normal, and uh, get to the skate park, dude, riding around a little bit, and, like, not really feeling it, you know, just kind of, like... Feel uh, weird? Yeah, just yeah. feeling a little, you know, fuck, don't really think much of it, right? Go back home, and, like, I'm hanging out for a little bit, and... Uh, Shit's starting to get like a little more weird, you know. Uh, fuck, can't stop like moving my legs. And, yeah, like, you know, like uh, I'm like kind of cold, but like I'm sweating a bunch, you know, and like it's it's coming on, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm not really tripping, you know. Then like uh, a 
few more hours goes by and like dude like now i'm fucking tripping yeah you know what i mean like going through it dude right and i have no idea why this is happening to me you know yeah uh i'm just dying yeah right like i am fucking dying right now yeah i am not and, okay uh, yeah, yeah dude this is fucked something's up you know right uh it's like my girlfriend got home and she uh i tell her what's going on dude like fuck turn around we're going to the hospital i'm fucking dying you know yeah um and like she's like well like did you did you take your pills today you know like no i don't need those dude. yeah i'm good um and she's like look like take your pills you know and like i get mad dude right like mad like i'm fucking dying right now yeah and like all you can think about is fucking getting high you know yeah um but i fucking you know uh her reasons for it or you know they make sense to me mm -hmm. and so i fucking crush this thing up dude calling her a bunch of mean names under my breath dude and i fucking take <laughs> this fucking, fucking stupid yeah. bitch uh, yeah dude it's and i crazy. fucking take the pill again dude right and like sure as shit dude like the snot just fucking sucks back up in my nose yeah. dude the sweat oh, I'm goes fine. back yeah. inside my body right dude yeah. like everything's good you know and like what the fuck was that yeah you know um and that was it, dude. You figured out what drug fucking withdrawals are. Fucking, yeah, dude, you got Organically, dope sick, right? Yeah. Like that's fucking, that's dope sick. Yeah. You know? Um, so this is early in the game for you on, yeah. on your career of doing it. Mm -hmm. And did you ever make it to the point where you're completely off for a while? Or did, was it pretty much steady state since then? I mean, like, I had, like, periods where I wasn't, um, where, like, I wasn't doing uh, any opiates, right? Where I wasn't doing Oxycontins or, like, I was, like, you know, I got, like, maybe a couple weeks off of heroin or whatever, you know, uh, but never like completely sober. Yeah. Right. Um, that wasn't an option yeah. at that point. You know, be I was still like, I was still like drinking alcohol or like smoking weed or like fucking eating some Xanax or like whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, something to just whatever do just to fucking not feel the way that I did. Yeah. You know? And, uh, so yeah, dude, I'm fucking showing up, you know, showing up to uh, showing up to work, dude, all the time. Hi. Yeah. Right. Dude, I'm showing up for every clip, dude, for, you know, everything, dude. Right. Like, yeah. Showing up. Hi. Yeah. You know, and uh, early on, dude, like pretty good at it. Yeah. You know? No one had any. Right. Know, no one knew exactly anything, yeah. dude, what was going on or whatever. Dude, no one had any idea. Uh, and like it did what it, you know, what I needed it to. For right. A long time. Right. Like that's why no one knew. Just get like, normal. It was working. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, it was allowing me, dude, to show up and participate in my life, dude, in a way that I had never able to before. Yeah. Right. Yep. And uh, it was when, like, it stopped working the way that I needed to that, like, people started to realize, like, dude, something's up. Yeah. What's the fuck going on with this kid? You know? So when is that point? Are we skipping over a bunch if we go to that? I guess yeah, we're skipping probably. over it. Yeah, yeah we skipped over quite a bit if we're going over that. So, let's but, see. Yeah, we start, uh, you know, I get hurt, dude. I start taking these pills, and, like, um, we're still filming. I think we're about halfway through filming Mediocre at that time. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, dude, I mean, I was just as fucking mediocre, right? I was fucking filming yeah. my first video part, and, like... Going in, uh, too. Riding my bike. Did yeah, good, dude, yeah. Like, uh, dude, like, I didn't really ride a whole lot of street before you right. know it wasn't until you asked me to like uh get a couple clips dude that i really thought like oh dude what would i want to do yeah if i was riding street Hell you yeah. know um i didn't know any tricks yep you know i don't know how to bar spin you don't know how to tail whip right but like uh i know how to ride my bike yeah which you know? is sick yeah. yeah um so yeah dude we would just show up to spots dude and like that's when i've really like found like a fucking like a real love for street riding yeah right? like, dude, that was the aspect of bike riding dude that like i didn't know that i was looking for my entire life yeah right you know what i mean it's because it's kind of um, art and you have the natural inclination for art exactly. so it's just yeah right? like art i got with your to bike. ride my bike dude creatively yeah so you cool it's, it the, was, it's the yeah, best it was sick yeah you know how can i ride this spot dude differently from everybody else yeah when you think about the mediocre era what is it? It's got to be like 2011 to 2013 or 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those three years. What memory sticks out as the, the best for you and your part 
of that video? Hmm. Dude, I don't know, right? Like, it's tough like to I remember. Said, I wasn't, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, I wasn't like. I uh, can't remember shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'm was, asking for me too. There's a lot of other shit going on at that yeah. time, dude. But like, really, like that period in my life, right? Um, was probably like the most confident and like secure and like the most fun, dude. That like most fun period of my life. Yeah, you know what I mean. The the slightly sloped downhill at the beginning of that journey is the best part. You know? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, dude, it was just like showing up, dude, and like fucking showing up to a spot, dude, and like, all right, let's do it. What can I do? Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what I can do. You know, absolutely no idea what I'm capable of. But doing. I'm gonna try uh, it. We're gonna figure something out. Yeah. You know? When's uh, the last time you watched your part? What what clip would you say you're like most proud of in the video? Um The Chase I mean, it's Banks. It's been a while since I watched that part. But yeah, dude, Chase Banks. Yeah. Like obviously like Drop in on like this. the most like standout clip, yeah, right? Like there's crazy. a, um, I mean, there's a few clips, dude. That last, that last like gap over that rail, dude. That I had yeah, like, that was six pedals at, dude, yeah. or something. Just the most. Everybody chases short you down the street. Way. Yeah, yeah. Sean like pushes me out of the way of that stop sign, so I run into yep. it. Um, God, that shit was cool. That's yeah, a dude. underrated clip because it's just one angle, I believe. Mm-hmm. But. Whew, that's yeah. a, that's well, a I don't think, dude, nobody there thought like I was going to do it. Yeah, they're like, you're you crazy. Know? Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, you didn't think I was going to do it no. for sure. Um, Drew refused to watch it. Yeah. He like went yeah. down. He's like, I'm not watching this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> he's like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> it went perfectly. Yeah. I don't think it could have gone any better. No, no, not at all. I'm trying to think of your yeah, clips. Like I remember you hitting my lens with your pedal. When we filmed that fountain line, you manual the first fountain. Yeah, it slipped uh, out. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, that's one of my favorite. And then when I skate under you, and these are like selfish because I, rem- like I like one of the film. first clips that yeah, we did it was. when I yeah. grinded that dumpster and you skated under me. Yeah, I'm yeah. still proud of that one. That was cool. That was a fun, that was a yeah. fun clip. It's so weird. Uh, Doing it, tr- I wouldn't want to be the rider and have the skater go under me. No, while, dude, <laughs> especially know? like yeah. this is like my first like. Yeah. Like my first time on camera. We should and film shit. together. Like, got <laughs> Don't so, hit me. Yeah, you know. This is how we're doing this. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. You know how distracting that is, yeah. dude? I'm going to fall in this dumpster or yeah. like whatever, you yeah. know? <laughs> Worked out perfect yeah, as dude. usual. And then you had real cool foot plant stuff. The fast plant on the bench to 180 backwards feeble thing. I think yeah, it ended yeah, up being like a sprocket feeble type little, of thing. Yeah. My, and Mesa, my right? High, yeah. 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 Good times, man. Good times. Who's... uh. What about like the people in it? Like we, because like the mediocre never really was like a cohesive crew. It was me piecing together the best writers and making a video. Yeah. But of the memories that you have with other people in the video, what sticks? This is so selfish of me because I'm just like reveling in our past. <laughs> but like, what, what if anything do you remember about hanging out with Drew or Joey or the twins or Lashawn? Well, I mean, dude, it was all like, uh, like I said, dude, right? Like that period of my life dude was like the most fun that I ever had you know um so just like really like to just fucking hanging out with everyone dude at the sessions or like going out to the bars afterward and like so fun out, dude, dude you know yeah. what I mean like just all Casey's. of Casey's yeah um I didn't get to hang out with the twins like as much as I they never hung out yeah. now, that, now yeah. that I say that they never hung out yeah. but um but like dude I it's it's interesting I got to build like um some like pretty cool relationships with everyone in that video, right? End mm-hmm. up tattooing a bunch of them, mm-hmm. you know, and like he tattooed uh, everybody with the mediocre at best, you know? Yeah, 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 dude. So it's just, uh, <clears throat> yeah, dude. Good times. Um. Okay. Cool. And then I don't know if you can remember, but the period between mediocre and blunted and that era. What? Yeah, I don't even know what question to ask, honestly, because like mediocre at best ends, and then Lashawn and them, and you. I think you were involved in like the creation of Blunted, no? No. No. No, no. That was all um that was all Chai and uh LaShawn. Yeah. And yeah. That that part's epic too. I think yeah, it, dude, which that one's was better? Like, I feel like Blunted's better than Mediocre for your part. Um Except I killed it on filming and editing. Dude, you know I don't know. Saying? Like I don't really know which one's better. Yeah. Right. Um Mediocre has like a very special place in my heart, dude, because it's like first video part right that's it's like so my crazy for a first video part like yeah. 
uh, street riding and like, right, dude, it's like what got me hyped on street riding. Yeah. You know, just the whole experience of like fucking meeting everybody, dude, and like uh, hanging out at a spot, dude, for like three hours bullshit yeah. while someone tries to get a clip yeah. and like, you know what I mean? And Those like are the best times. how to be creative, you yeah. know? Yeah. And uh, dude, Forever Rolling started pretty quickly after Mediocre at best. Yeah. Like there wasn't really much... Uh, much downtime in between yeah you know like we finished up uh finished up forever rolling dude and like LaShawn was like on one after his fucking after the banger part mediocre dude and like just was fucking wanting to film momentum you know? yeah yeah and uh Tammy was there dude like with that same energy dude that same yep. momentum and like they were very good at getting everyone hyped so yeah. we got this little crew together dude and like did it again yeah you know they were the heart of that operation oh yeah 100 percent seemingly infinite energy coming out of those two it's yeah. wild you know yeah, yeah. yeah 100 percent, dude um it's crazy to think back to the mediocre days and thinking about how different things are now with everybody has to post their shit on instagram in order to get noticed like instagram didn't even have video while we were filming mediocre no, like it was yeah, only photos which is weird yeah. and i remember all the promos for the premiere there was a 15 second time limit on clips on instagram like you couldn't post a clip longer than 15 seconds yeah. so it's Posting a clip on social media was very rare, you know, not a, not a normal thing. Yeah. yeah, that didn't take off, dude, till way later. Yeah. Uh, so at what point does Sabrosa come in a little bit? I know I'm working for them, and I think I'm trying to get you on type shit and said, mm-hmm. let's film a video. I don't know what. So my bike, I don't had, gotten, it. <laughs> my bike had gotten stolen. Okay. And uh, I needed a new bike, dude, and, like, they helped me out with a bike. Sick. And, like, yeah. uh... I'd met sure at, actually, I don't even remember the timeline of that. I, if I got the bike first and then right. went to Interbike and like met sure and like got to tattoo him and like hang out with him for a little bit. Was I there? Uh, I feel like no. For that. Yeah, no. I was going to say, I feel like no. No, because I think, um, so I think it was when Mediocre played at Nora, right? We had our Nora premiere. That was in Vegas. Yes. And then, uh, no, blunted, blunted premiere. Blunted premiere Nora. was in Vegas. Yeah. Okay, so this is after the blunted premiere, yeah. right? Um, we go to the premiere, dude. Like Nora Cup at that time was Nora Cup, dude. Everyone's partying, and mm-hmm. like, um, I got a fuck tattoo the next day. So like, the premiere ended, dude. I fucking uh, got the little homie Nando. I like dragged him out there with me. I was like, all right, dude, we got to go home. Nice. And fucking <laughs> hopped in the car, dude. And like, we're both like just wrong dude, yeah like faded right and like drove back to phoenix not bad and not like, bad so like two in the morning drive back to phoenix type shit when probably is, like yeah, four no, or five in the morning whoa right? okay yeah. yeah um made it back to phoenix too by like 11 dropped nando off dude and like showed up to the shop wow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's called making it happen that's yeah. crazy I would, uh you could you wouldn't catch me doing that these days for sure no maybe back dude, then though. absolutely not yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. So that's cool. It seems, you know, at this point, you, I, I'm thinking about that video, the Sabrosa Aaron Maxwell video. But yeah. It was that Aaron, Aaron Maxwell. So that's like thank when, you, like, Sabrosa. Yeah, it was the a thank, thank you edit. edit. That yeah. was it, dude. Yeah. Right. Like, they didn't, uh, I don't think there's really, that's I know where you were like trying to get me on or whatever, but yeah. I don't think there's ever any like real talk about no, yeah. anything happening. Yeah. Um, you and Ryan Olsen both. I wanted to get you guys on, but there wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't in the cards. Yeah. It just wasn't clicking. That's, that's what fine. it is. Yeah. Right? Like, uh, I was like, these guys are, are they're rockers, dude. They are Sabrosa, <laughs> dude. They're the shit. Yeah. You guys do have, but like, dude, we got to like go and like ride with those dudes all the time whenever they're in town, yeah. like with you, whatever, dude. And at and the like, end of the day, what is on? You got a free yeah, bike, dude, and, don't fuck yeah. Me. You know, um, they helped me out, dude. I wanted to say thank you, right? And we yeah. made that cool little video for him. That's very cool. Yeah, and that's when uh, Jono was in town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and Jono was around, dude, hanging out for. I feel like I had the 15 passenger van at that point. The hand me down from your guys's van, like your guy, your van, your family van. Yeah. Went to either LaShawn or me first, and then from him to me, and then back or something like that. Yeah, but that, it was weird. That thing was a beast. Yeah, you know? dude, I missed that van. Dude. That shit was sick. Thing had been on some trips yeah. dude, around America. Miles on it. Yeah. Uh, okay, and I, I mean this and this whole period, mediocre, blunted, Sabrosa. 
this is where it's progressively getting worse, the addiction? And what are you doing? Oh, yeah, 100%. How does it go um, from just dabbling with rolling, pills to... Forever rolling was probably, like, the transition from, like, um, from, like, pills, like, into, like, into the gnarlier stuff, dude, into, like, doing heroin. Heroin. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, how did uh, it feel the first time you did it? Not not the effects of it, but how did you feel about yourself doing it? Gross. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck great, am I doing? Dude. Yeah, you know why am I, mean? I doing but this? Like, um, at that point, I'd, like, started, like, losing, losing my jobs at some shops, you know, and, like, not making as much money, and, like, people are starting to see that something's up, and, like, uh, it was cheaper. How many, before you made the switch to heroin, how many blues were you taking a day? Oh, dude, I don't know. Uh, yeah. A no lot? Idea. Yeah. 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 A lot of money. Yeah. Because um, those are 20, they were 20 bucks each, right? Yeah, a dollar a milligram. Yeah. Yeah. Sheesh. <laughs> 25, 30 bucks. Dude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dude. So like shit was getting harder, dude. And like I made the financial decision. I'm going to start doing heroin. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's black and white financials, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so they look, black and white. I could do this or I could do this. Yeah. yeah. That's hard. It's a tough. Thanks for being down to talk about it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Dude. Um, what would you tell somebody who's like dabbling at the beginning of like, oh, opiates are fun. <laughs> a scary scary thing because especially dude, if you don't not, know there's not like anything really to tell them right yeah like dude at the time like i you know what i mean like i i knew what i was doing was wrong right right like i know that i'm not supposed to snort oxycontin i know that i'm not supposed to shoot heroin right you know um, but there's nothing anybody could have told you no yeah. not at all yeah. like i had that understanding that i'm not supposed to do this dude and like i can't stop yeah what a crazy mind fuck it is. That's crazy. So, but like there was, you know, like, like with that understanding, right? That like, I'm not supposed to do that. Right. Like there was a lot of attempts, you know, to um, stop. Yeah. 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 100%. Yeah. You know, um, I did, dude. I tried a lot. Like many solo, times, dolo, dude, right? tried really hard. Tried to just you know, cold turkey like, it. Uh, not How necessarily would it go? cold turkey. Dude, I'd get suboxone. Some tapering. Yeah. You know, I'd get some suboxone, like try and taper down and, uh, you know, fucking just stick to smoking weed or like one bar. Nothing a day can replace like it. You know, it's crazy. Fucking whatever, right? Yeah, just like trying to like maintain something, right? And like trying to fucking maintain some sort of normalcy. That's hell. You know? Yeah. Um, and like, how did it go, dude? Like, I had the same result every time. What's right? the result? High again. Yeah. Yeah. How s- how quick again. did you ever make it? Like a week? Uh. Yeah, I do. I think like at that point in time, dude, like the longest I probably mean like be able to go, dude, was like maybe a week and a half, two weeks, you know. Pretty solid, you yeah, know. Dude, almost, like almost on the other like side there. Yeah, hanging on by a thread. Yeah, you know, for like just. At, if, I feel like at that point, thread, at that know? point, you beat the physical part, but the mental part will still get you. Yeah, you dude, know? the obsession. Yeah, right? it's just on me. Yeah, right. Like could not shake it. Yeah. Um, and it didn't matter like what was going on in my life, right? Mm-hmm. Like I didn't need my life to be like burning to the ground to like justify. Um, life could be good and you still want it, you know? Yeah. yeah. I could take any, any circumstance, dude, any event, right? Twist it, turn it, manipulate it, do it, justify it. And, yeah. Like, I'm celebrating uh, or I'm bummed. Fucking, any like, emotion. Yeah, like you it's can, a reason to like, get yeah, again, you yeah. Know? It's a good enough reason. Don't I know it, brother. <laughs> 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 oh man. So. Um, I think it, I, I, this, this seems like this is the point in time where you and I kind of lose contact for a while. Like it, where I just, I feel like Aaron's g- gone off the deep end on the, the heroin and everything. Like, yeah, dude, like, um, tell me that story right, if like you don't mind. All the attempts, right? Like, um, right. Like just trying over and like over and over again to stop, dude. Like I just can't stop. Yeah. You know, um, like every failed attempt was uh was extremely disheartening yeah i bet right like every time i uh every time i tried to quit dude like i just lost a little bit more hope each time that like i'm ever gonna be able to beat this thing yeah right i'm like, just stuck forever just fucking yeah dude just like, Woof. Yeah. yeah and all these attempts they're on your own like do you have anybody that you can talk to about all this at this point or is it just stuck in your own i mean you had your girl a little bit right yeah like you know, she was trying to do it with me. You know, we both had like, we're both trying. We both made the decision we're going to do this. Right. You know? And then like, uh, I usually failed first. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, 
that actually really jogs a memory of being over at your place. I think you had roommates, but it felt like it was a house in Mesa. Mm -hmm. And I remember walking into your room and seeing you on your bed doing something. I can't remember, but it was something. And I was just like, oh, shit. You know, like yeah. you, you're in it. Yeah, something's up. And the other memory I have is like waking up at your mom's house and like after a sleep sleepover or whatever, I crashed there. And then in the morning, you would take a 45 minute long shower. Yeah, and I was like, dude. what's he doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> and now we know. <laughs> yeah, dude, now we know. Yeah. <clears throat> it be it's like a little ritual and then after you get it it's, everything's all good let's go yeah. get, let's go get some coffee you were always very fucking chill <laughs> <laughs> i never really the saw the the chill, polar dude. opposite side because i'm sure when you were having withdrawals and being grumpy you were probably a nightmare to be around i don't know but yeah. maybe you weren't because i you you do have a very chill demeanor mm. you were well <laughs> yeah well uh <laughs> so that's the thing about like um, it's like the weird thing about like withdrawal, right? It's like, dude, I can't like when I'm like when I'm sick, dude, I cannot find that same motivation to like get well, dude, that I can for anything else in my life. Yeah. Right. Like, um, like you need food to survive. Right. Yeah. Like I need food to fucking to live. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, never at one point in my life, dude, have I kicked in the door cause I need a fucking burrito. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like I cannot find that same motivation to like get well, like as I can for anything else in my life. At that point, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, dude. Like when I'm. Uh, what does that mean when you say get well? Do you mean get off of it or get your fix? Get yeah to like get well is to just get yeah, normal like by doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Do some more. Yeah. Right? yeah. Not be dope sick. Right. I'm dope sick. I need to get well. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Getting high. Again. At what point in time do you think it transitions from being fun and getting high to just trying to be normal? Because that's the thing about addiction that's so scary is just like, we, and then now you're in a hole and you have to just keep trying to get, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think about the time that, uh, about the time that like I dropped off, right? Like when I just, you guys didn't see me anymore. Yeah. Right? Um, it's probably about the time, dude, that like it stopped, like it really stopped being fun. Yeah. But Just like at that point, I fully normal. conceded to the fact that like, this is it, you know? This is my life now. Yeah. Yeah. This is just, this is what I do. Yeah. Right? How I was know, that? Uh, how was the journey to where you are now? Fuck. Like what was the, what I, I guess just give me some highlights. I don't want you to tell everything. Your autobiography can come out later as a book or something. <laughs> nah, no autobiography. But um, um, dude, it was uh, it was gnarly. Yeah, you know, um, I feel like I left home, right, dude. I hit the streets and like, uh, could not stop. Homeless. Uh, yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah. Homeless for in a car. No. Nope. <sighs> Literally just walking. Dude, yeah, at that point, right? Like I fucking sold everything that I owned, right? I clucked everything off. Right? Yeah. For some dope. Yep. You know? And, uh, damn. Yeah. So, like, dude, I hit the streets, dude, and like fucking homeless, right? I had a backpack, um, and I could never keep a backpack, dude, for like longer than a week. Cause you keep you losing know? it or what? Uh, losing get it, stolen. get stolen yeah. or whatever, dude, or I'm just sick of fucking carrying it, right? And, like, <laughs> damn, fuck this backpack. Yeah, I'll leave you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, dude, um, could not stop getting arrested. You Where know? would you sleep when you were living on the streets? Um, at first, dude, like, in, like, parks or fucking some, like, weird cut that I could find, you know, away from everybody, but, like, um, got sick of my shit getting stolen. Yeah. You know? So, like, at one point, dude, like, I didn't sleep in the streets. Where, so, where would you? Refused. Um, I would stay up, um, as long as I needed to, to get enough money for a hotel room get a hotel room for a couple nights, dude, like pass out for a couple days and then like go back out and do it again. How would you make money? Various ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mostly borrowing a lot of, uh, borrowing a lot of shit, dude, with the intention to sell it and never return it. From other homeless people? Uh, or dude, no, people, look, just people you know. Wherever, dude. Stores, yeah. people, right? Yeah. Um, 
can I borrow this? You giving them puppy eyes? No, dude, I'm I? not asking anyone to borrow anything, right? <laughs> okay. I'm like being pretty aggressive about it, dude, and taking it from yeah. them. Yeah, okay. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know why I just pictured you giving puppy eyes. Like, <laughs> can I please borrow this? Like, that's like, if that's the version of me that you know, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. it's like a pretty, like, laid back, like, calm dude, right? But right. Like, um, that's not the guy that's the street, out there. Right, like, that's yeah. not, not, you're not making it. Hard. Right, yeah, yeah. like, you just gotta, you just turn cold, yeah. you know? grow a little bit colder dude a little bit meaner and like every day the longer you're out there dude yeah you just end up like an entirely different person i bet you yeah know, just completely unrecognizable um how i mean i th- i'm t- <laughs> i don't want to ask too much but like tell me something about like, the most money you got at once while being homeless like robbing something or selling something or did you panhandle ever never panhandled yeah. We're too good for that shit. Yeah, you know there's saying? like, yeah, it's just some fuck ego in me that like yeah. wouldn't let me. Yeah, I'm bad, but like, I'm not I just that can't, bad, like, dude. Yeah, dude, well, like, I just, dude, I'm terrible at asking for help. You know, I don't know how to ask for help, dude. And like panhandling sounds a whole lot like asking for help. Yeah. Right? Like, I, I don't need your help. Right. right. I'm fine. Yeah. I can do this on my own. I'll figure it right? out. Fuck yeah, face. I'm yeah. good. You so know? what was the plan? How it's did you? Far from good. And how do you figure out plans like oceans 11 type shit you're sitting there and you're fucking all right i'm gonna go in here i'm gonna stake this place out and then go in there and take shit like what no nah, dude i was what would you do uh no nah, dude i'm not that smart <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean uh just reckless yeah you know what i mean I'm just reckless. fuck it i'm gonna yeah. go get this you know, fuck, go in there i'm gonna take this i'm gonna walk straight out with it right alarm's going off dude i'll go out the emergency door or whatever but yeah like um, what's what would be like the goal the objective like i obviously i'm thinking it's just kind of sporadic you're walking past i don't know a speaker store or something like that and go do that but like what was the prime target what's a good place to if i wanted to go rob today what what would you coach me to do <laughs> that's fucking <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically uh, speaking dude i don't i didn't have a plan right? like i didn't know what i was doing what do you remember like, um Dude, I would take like in. I would allegedly take. Allegedly, yes. Allegedly, um, dude, I would take anything right from like Tide Pods and Downy Bees to sell to the Paisas, like in the trailer park behind Circle K on all. What's a Paisa? Uh, Paisa. Like n- originally born in Mexico. Okay. Right. Like yeah. you have Chicanos and you have Paisas. Chicanos are born uh, in America, right? And like Paisas are born in Mexico. Interesting. Right? Um, so get some Tide Pods and sell it to the Pisces. Yeah. For how much? Five bucks? Ten bucks? Uh, ten bucks. A yeah. Little you know thing or whatever. And, yeah. You know everything pretty much sold for like fifty percent. Yeah. Right. Whatever you know whatever I got, dude. Like you got fifty percent. Right. You're giving me fifty percent of what this is worth. Yeah. Um, Good deal. Great deal. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Expected, right? <laughs> yeah. That sold itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, dude. Like and then like. Not gonna get too much into like the big shit that like we did, but like um we. So you had a little uh, homies out there to do shit with you. Like you yeah, build up like a team. I, not really, right? Like there's like one or two people that like I probably ever didn't really like um that I didn't ever take from or like use, you know. Yeah. But like if I met you on the streets, dude, like I'm taking you for a ride. Yeah. Right. Like you have something that I want. You're either going to hand it to me or I'm going to take it from you. Yeah. You know, that's Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, scary. Uh, and like, that just fuck, you know what I mean? It is it what it is. Got, it just got gnarly. Yeah. You know I mean, like, the crimes just got gnarlier. Right. You know? What was um, the first arrest for? To, uh, probably like, oh, shoplifting. Some little petty shoplifting, dude. It's like someone from Home Depot, I think it was. The yeah. First one. And they catch you on the on site, or they caught you after the fact. Um, so loss prevention caught me on site, and then uh, they detain you. They took my name, whatever. They're like, look, man, like you can hang out here. Like the cops are on their way. You can hang out here, right? Like we got your information, you know. Um, and like they'll write you a ticket, uh, or like they'll take you to jail, right? He's like, I can't really tell you like which guys. I've seen both happen, you know. He's like, or you can leave and like they'll mail you a letter for like a summons or like a ticket or whatever. And like uh, you can deal with it later. I would leave. 
Bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that gone. sounds like a problem for future me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And they, like, you know, and at this point, uh, you know, like I said, you like, it just, it, the arrest didn't stop. Right. And uh, at this point, you heroin's, like, pretty scarce. Right. Like, now it's all fentanyl. Right now, it's yeah. all, like, the... The blues, right? Yeah. The perk 30s and shit. I was going to ask what it was like to score heroin. It looks like black tar and it's just from a dude. Like you just have a guy or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Same way you buy weed, right? What about like, like. They hand you heroin instead of. What weed. about needles and shit? How did you get <laughs> clean needles? I feel like there's services out there. Mm-hmm. And so people on the street yeah, all, all I mean, are like aware of like Walgreens or, you know. Um, there's like. Uh, there's like shot in the dark, dude. There's some like harm reduction services. Yeah, and stuff. that's what I was thinking like of. Yeah, and like hand some shit out. Um, Did you ever consider going? Because I just uh, toured this place that um, is temporary housing for people transitioning from being homeless to getting a home. And there's like, you know, I don't know the term for it, but places that are free for you to go stay at on the condition of like don't do drugs, which is fucking probably pretty tough to tough yeah. sell for uh-huh. somebody out there in your position. Yeah, dude. Like I can't not do that. Right. Right. Like, yeah, and uh, going to those places, like also the same thing is asking for help. Right, right. Like, yeah. Did anybody like, ever try and help you while you're stuck on the street in the throes of it? Like, anybody um, say, "Hey, let's get you into a detox." Yeah. You know, there's like a few, uh, there's a few people that would like pop up, dude. Like, hey, dude, like, are you done yet? You know. Yeah, and you're like, nah. Pretty much. Yeah. You know. Like, just fully convinced, dude, that, like, I am incapable of getting sober. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, And, like, thank God for those people. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. uh, Because, like, at that point, dude, right? Like, I was, like, pretty convinced, dude, that, like, I had just been forgotten. You know? Yeah. Uh, So it's, like, little small shit like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, That, like, was, like, just a fucking just... A brief moment, dude, that like, no, that I'm like, just like, like, oh, some people, you know, like this. And like, yeah, you like poke your head up the right, water like, a little bit, and you're like, oh, like, yeah, you fuck care, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, little shit like that would happen, yeah. Right? Um, uh, like, shout out Clay, yeah, right? Shout out Clay, yeah. I remember, uh, one of the times I got, uh, got released, right? Like, sis, my mom and sister come pick me up or whatever, and like, Kalen had made a post on Instagram or something, and like. Clay made like some comment. I think Robbie did too. And they're like free A Max or whatever. Right? Yeah. And like, dude, like that comment, right? Like had so much power for me. You nice. know what I mean? Like, fuck, yeah. dude, like people still fucking yeah. care about me. You yep. know what I mean? Um, Which is probably hard to see when you're in the thick of it. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. like I don't. Yeah. Right. Like I don't. Fuck you don't have your own bag. So I don't get anybody yeah, else. Dude, like, have I, don't, it. I don't really understand how people. Uh, uh, could care or have love for me, right? Like that's something I am incapable of like giving to myself, right? Yeah. Like I don't see what you guys see. Yeah. You know, that's hard. Yeah. While you're out there, I'm curious because I know meth is pretty predominant out on the streets. Did you dabble with that? Did it ever get you? Yeah. Hooked. Yeah. Did you feel I mean, like, like, dude, a, like that's a different addiction? I think the meth versus really opiates, like, but I mean, yeah, they're you know one's like an one's extreme upper and the other one's, one's like extreme yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, but like that was like pretty much like to stay up for those like couple days until I got the hotel room. Yeah. It wasn't like my, wasn't my thing. It's kind of, it's, I mean, there's jokes about it, but like you, if you're a drug addict on the street, you just wake up with side quests. Like you're like, wake up, collect copper. You know, yes. <laughs> you have like your you mission. <laughs> yeah, dude, you got, yeah, you like literally just on a mission all day, dude. So you can like keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. They got to get this shit. That's, I mean. Number one goal, dude, is like staying high. Yeah. You what know, a so. fucking, what a situation, man. Yeah. So how many times did you get arrested before it became uh, clear you needed to change? Absolutely no idea. 30, 50? Mm, not 50, dude. I'm somewhere near 20 or 30. That's know? a lot. Yeah. yeah. Over the course of how long is this? How long were you not sleeping in a house? About five years. Five years. Wow. Yeah. Damn, you did it. I didn't know that. That's fucking yeah, like, crazy. Like, like 2017, like 2022-ish. Wow. So, so through actually, the pandemic. You know what, actually, for... So COVID four starts and you're on the streets. Yeah, dude. COVID starts, right? And they're like, if you're going to be out in public, you need to wear a mask. 
<laughs> say less. Say less, dude. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And like, dude, they weren't arresting anybody at that time, right? Like the jails were shut down. So like, dude, I'm getting stopped with like felony warrants, you know? Yeah. Like fucking hella felony warrants, dude. And they're like, we can't do anything. You're not a murderer. You can go. Wow. Yeah. What a time to be alive, yeah, huh? Dude, what the fuck? Fucking, it was wild. COVID was wild. Yeah. How um, did you first hear about COVID? Because if you're not, I mean, do you have a phone at this point? Like, are you still I mean, yeah. maintaining, keeping yeah, no. a smartphone and so you can see shit going on? Or did you have no, phones? Not to like see shit that's going yeah. on. You know. So like, how did you first learn that we're in a pandemic? You just wake up one morning and people are wearing masks and the streets are empty? Or one day you're like... Why is there no cars yeah, on the road? Yeah, I don't really remember how I knew, right? Like, it was just kind of like there was, like, a buzz on the street that, like that there's this, like, weird thing going around. Right, yeah. You know? Um, Everybody's talking about it like type shit. Like, fucking stay away from people. Yeah. You know? Um, which was pretty easy for me, right? Like, yeah. that was my... Like outside of getting high, dude, like staying this. away from people was, like... That's my favorite thing yeah, to do. Yeah, but say less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, the rest of us uh, saw on TV, and I remember seeing uh, Old Town Scottsdale on the news. It's good, just just a ghost town, and the news reporter is talking about it and this thing, blah blah blah. And it was so scary at first, man. I'll never forget it. Like, yeah. oh shit, um, I'm about to kill my dad. The weird thing is, dude, is like right, like I was outside the entire time. Right? Yeah. people are like locked in their houses, dude, and like afraid to go outside. Like they right. go outside, they're gonna die. Yeah, right. Um, Which is so ass backwards, dude. It's yeah, that's and like, false. dude, I never got it. Yeah. Good you for you. Mean? Never got. You never it. got it. Never got it. Dude. Huh? Yeah. Um, Did you get the and like, vaccine? Dude, there's a. Did, no. Were people out passing the vaccine out to the homeless? Out I mean, there? they might have been. Yeah. They might have been. I'm sure. Let's get you jabbed up. They were, but like, yeah, I wasn't. No. Unvaxed, bro. Huh? Unvaxed. Yeah. Let's go, yeah. gang, gang. Yeah. <laughs> um. And like, who knows, dude? I think I probably at that point in my life, she was probably too paranoid to go get like a vaccine from the government. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're going to put a chip in yeah, my arm. Something's <laughs> up, dude. Yeah. Something's up. Yeah. Um, so tell me the, so yeah, dude, like in and out of jails and like, uh, do I'm doing fentanyl and like at that point in time, dude, like, um, I'm out there like just casually dying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what do you mean by that? Casually dying. I can't stop overdosing. Oh, you keep overdosing. Yeah. yeah. Like, I literally keep dying. Dying. Yeah. Whether it was intentional, unintentional. Are you smoking right? the fentanyl? Is that I how do you would do it? However. Right. So, wait, people did melt it and shoot it up. No? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is next level. But, I mean, if you're out there yeah, and you got to make, you want to make the most. The powder's out there, too. So, like, you're just That's scary as fuck. Like, sc- I've, I've seen that. And I was just yeah. like, you could die off of that much of that shit. That's pretty scary. Mm-hmm. Then the homemade pills are another terrifying thing. Yeah. All of it. Dude. Yeah, it's a it's scary, scary terrifying. trap. <clears throat> um, can can I ask like the just the peak amount of usage to stay normal if you can remember? No idea. Yeah. Yeah. No idea. A healthy amount. Yeah. Not healthy, but <laughs> <laughs> quite large. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I want to be sensitive about it. I don't want to fucking make you feel like uncomfortable talking oh, about dude, all this shit. Like, you know? No, dude. I mean, like this is. Uh, like, this is part of, like, the primary purpose today, right? Yeah. Is to, like, uh, I don't know, dude, like, bring awareness, right? And, like, uh, hopefully uh, someone else that's, like, going through it, right? Yeah. Is, like, is in that spot, right? Can, like, hear this, dude, and, like, relate to the shit that I'm, you know, that we're talking about. Right. You know? Um, and, like, physically see, you know, like, obviously see, like, dude, I'm, I'm better now. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. I'm fucked. Dude, life up and got Brad good. Brad-eyed and bushy-tailed, you know my mean? guy. Yeah, yeah, dude, like, life got good. Yeah. You know? Um, hopefully they get a little bit of hope. Yeah. You know? That, like, what was uh, it like for you, the final straw and the getting clean? What? How did you do it? And how- This episode is brought to you by Burn Slow. Go to burnslow.co and buy yourself a shirt. I recommend the ones with the old school looking bike on it or the ones with Bam Margera on them. And uh, yeah, Burn Slow's sick. Started and ran by the legendary crew of BMX riders. Pop quiz, leave a comment and name all the founders of Burn Slow and I'll send you one free shirt. 
That's a fun contest I just made up right now. So yeah, shout out Burn Slow. They got dope shit. Go buy yourself something and no promo code. Maybe someday promo code, but not right now. Burn Slow. I'm getting a, I'm getting some shirts real soon here, and I'm very excited for them. Thank you, Burn Slow. So I just watched it on the computer. The question was, before we so really ran out of space, what was it like for you when you had to shift and had to get better, you know? And then I think we... What got cut off is you talking about you had no choice and you didn't check into a detox place and oh yeah yeah just go cold turkey um, yeah, like, in jail yeah just having never like checked into a detox right like just I'm there's no point right? yeah like I'm incapable of getting sober I'm incapable of getting getting, getting better you know um, but like what shifted right was sometimes sit, you know I'm sitting in county jail this last time for about a year um, had like just avoided prison like by the skin of my teeth and uh I don't know like there's a few different things right like um like I'm sitting in jail dude for been like after a couple months dude like I'm having fun you know yeah like, it's good sober fun it's sober jail dude, fun. like not even like like that I'm sober and fun or whatever right because like I wasn't sober in jail right like I was drunk the entire time yeah you know what I mean like um Hooch. Well, What's it called? Yeah. Yeah. Hooch? Hooch? Yeah. yeah, dude. I'm Hoochie mama. There, like, yeah, dude. I'm <laughs> collecting oranges, dude. I'm buying oranges off of everybody and like I'm getting drunk. And you're I fermenting them. Stay. Yep. How long does it take to go from buying an orange to having alcohol? Uh, Like three, maybe four days. Okay. That's that's not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you bad. get a system going. Yeah. And, and like, you could be drinking drunk, every like, day. Every two days. Yeah. Or so, yeah. Um. Well, cause like I, dude, I wouldn't make small enough batches to where like I could keep going it every day. Mm -hmm. This is like too much of a risk. Yeah. Right. So like if I'm, if I'm squeezing, bo if I'm squeezing oranges, dude, I'm making bottles. Yeah. Um, I'm making like, I'm making a keg, right. I'm making like 30 bottles, yeah. 30, 40 bottles, huh. you know, like two or 300 oranges. How do you like do it? Two or 300 oranges. A lot of oranges, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's fun. I think, dude, two or three hundred might be a pretty big number. Dude. We're probably probably like around one hundred fifty oranges. Right? Wild. It's like three okay. oranges, you get a bottle. Yeah. You know, um, three to four oranges, you're getting a bottle. What's the process, know? briefly? Uh, peel the oranges, dude. You stick them in a sheet, and like you squeeze all the juice through the sheet, kind of like fill so you're not getting any pulp. Yep. Right? Just clean juice. Um. Now you got like a whole thing of a uh, whole thing of orange juice. And um, you're adding some sugar, right? You're dropping them in like uh, Sour Patch can, you know, Sour Patch Kids or like jelly packets or um, whatever, you know. Anything with sugar. sugar, right? right? <coughs> um, so it can like turn like ferment a little bit more. So then like the next uh, few days, like we're dropping like hot towels in the bin over it to try and like keep them warm. And like I got a bunch of people like keeping them in their waistbands, like with the, you know, their body heat yeah. to like get it cooking a little bit faster. And yeah, uh, you got to burp the bottles so they don't fucking blow up, you know? Okay. Remember one kid, he didn't know he had to burp the bottles. You know, I went to like check on a bottle, you know, <laughs> a day or two later, right? Like, hey man, like, how's that? How's that? You still got that bottle, right? Like you didn't, you didn't drink it, right? Um, and uh, it's like, yeah, cool. Did you burp it? He's like, what do you mean burp it? You know, like, do you got to let the pressure out, you know? <laughs> and uh, so, like, I fuck, take mine out and, like, show him how to burp it. And he's like, all right, cool. And, like, I shook mine right before I did it. Yeah. And, like, fuck, burped it. Uh, he takes his out, dude, and he goes to shake it. And the second he shook it, dude, boom. Pop! Yeah, it just fucking <laughs> blew up everywhere, dude. Uh, had to get, like, a bunch of stitches in his thumb right Damn. here. Damn. Like, it. That shit really exploded. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, did he blow your cover? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, lost all their bottles. Dude, yeah. the entire pot lost bottles. Damn. Yeah. We had to roll that kid out. Damn. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean, roll that kid out? He had to go to a different pod. Oh, because you were gonna you were gonna kick his ass. Not me. Yeah. Um everybody. The other yeah, yeah, the other people in the jail. Yeah. yeah. A year in jail, you get acclimated probably relatively quick. It's like, yeah. all right, this is my new you normal. Know, yeah, you know what I mean? And, like, the fact that, like, I hit a point, dude, like, where, like, I was having fun in there yeah. um, was scary to me. Yeah, right? I bet. Like, You're like, fuck, why do I like it in here? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, this yeah. is not a place that you're supposed to enjoy, right? right. And, like, the fact that, like, I found um, ease 
in there, right? Like it fucking that was like a scary thing. Yeah. You know? That's kinda gangster though. Um that's cool. Like I think like the the biggest shift that had happened, right, was like um, you know, at that point in time in my life, right? Like I dude, I could not imagine um I could not imagine my life without heroin or like you know, without without getting opiates, high, yeah. Right. Like I cannot imagine my life without that. And I'd hit that point, dude, where like um, I couldn't imagine my life without them, dude. And I could no longer imagine my life with them. Nice. Right? Like I'm at this like jumping off place, dude. Like, oh, like I don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do this still. Like this weird place, dude. But like, dude, like I, I know that I can't do this anymore. Right. Like, uh, you know, and like, I, it was like weird, right? Like I'd spend a time, like enough time off of it, dude, that like, I didn't really feel like I wanted to die anymore. Yeah. You know? Um, and from what I understand, that's really when you die is when you get some time under your belt off of it and then you go back. And that first time back is when you overdose and die. Yeah. 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 That had happened to me a bunch of times. Like yeah. I used to go, you know, get arrested, sit down for like a month or like three months or fuck six months. Right. And like get out, hit that bus stop, dude. And like die. Yeah. You know, crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, dude, like I, you know, I'd had many, I'd like many failed intentional attempts, you know, and like obviously a bunch of in- unintentional ones, dude, mm-hmm. like I woke up again, you know? Um, and like, dude, like I just, you know, I was, I was just done. Right. Like I just, I can't do this anymore, dude. Like, and like, obviously this isn't it. Right. Like you should, like I should, dude, I'm a dead man. Right? Like yeah. I should have at that point, dude, like I should have been dead. Yeah. You know? Hold that thought. I want to ask you, cause I've always been curious about like people who try to kill themselves with opiates or just overdosing. Like, what does it feel like to overdose? Is it painful no. or is it just, no, dude, you just go yeah. To sleep. Yeah. Yeah. So very it's not easy. too bad of a way to go as far as like the experience it's very of comfortable. it. Yeah. Yeah. Very comfortable. Um, I kind of in my head pictured like it was it would feel good up to a certain point and then you kind of panic as you realize that you're you overdid it and you, you start to, it doesn't feel good but I can't yeah it makes sense that it would just feel comfortable yeah, and dude, good like and just, you just like literally like um, it happens right you yeah fall asleep dude and like you wake up with a firefighter in your face asking you if you're okay yeah and like yeah. I, well, oh, shit, look I'm okay, still alive. Yeah. you know, no, I'm not okay, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, okay. So you were, you're in the place where you can't, yeah, dude, like, can't I see just with can't, it, can't see without it. Yeah. And like, if I, like, I, dude, if I'm not going to die, dude, like I need to try and figure out a way to live. Cause like, dude, this sucks, dude. Like it just hurts. You're just in a I, terrible like, cycle. Fuck, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm done. Yeah. And know? at that point, like the girl's gone, family's gone, friends are pretty much gone. You're just in jail alone at this point. Yeah, so, I mean, like, my mom had, like, you know, I do, I, I don't call my mom when I'm, like, out. Yeah. Right? Um, I get arrested, you know, like, and I'm a fucking selfish individual, you know? Um, I get arrested, and, like, once I'm done kicking and, like, you know, I'm fucking feeling hungry again, like, call moms because I need, some, I need some commissary, right? And, like, uh, she wouldn't do that up until this point right she found out i got a year she's like look if you sit down for the you know because at that point right like i was trying to get bonded out right mm-hmm. like get me the fuck out of here right and uh she's like look dude like you sit down for this year you know like i'll hold you down right we'll, i'll get you food and like uh get out and like we'll fucking make a plan and like whatever right nice um, that's good. That's lucky. Yeah, she was under the impression, like, because I'm in jail, dude, right? Like, I'm going to be sober. Right. You know, she didn't know that, like, I could stay drunk the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, dude, it was just initially, dude, it was, like, this decision that, like, we'll do when I got out. I'm going to do something different. So what was it? Um, there was one point in my past, dude, uh, I had been, like, shown, like, a, a, a program, right? And, uh. At that point in time, dude, like I was incapable of like sitting down and like taking any sort of responsibility for what was going on or like, you know what I mean? Just whatever. Um, just in complete contempt of this thing. Yeah. And uh, 
I had like finally hit that point. Like I had that experience that like kind of beat me into this state of reasonableness to like come back to this place and like sit down and like do some work. Nice. Yeah. What does the work look like when you say sit down and do some work? Um, Effectively, is it sharing your story? Is it all verbal work or written or no, studying? Dude, yeah, it's a lot of writing. You know, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, dude, and a lot of like sharing your experience. You know, yeah. Kind of similar to like what we've been doing with this or whatever, and um, working with other guys. Yeah. Right? Like just trying to be helpful. Right. And when was this? Growing when did, when like did this? Just trying to get dudes out the gutter and like show them like how to do this shit different. Yeah. You know, it's like, listen, brother, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you I've been there for yeah. real. That's, that's just like what that's happened great. to me. Right. Like I yeah. showed up, you know, I showed up to uh, to those rooms and like there was a group of dudes that like uh, talked about getting high the same way that I did and like talked about feeling the same way that I did. Like, mm -hmm. um, And uh, they fuck picked me up, dude, like brushed the dirt off my shoulders and, like, told me I was going to be good. Nice. Right? And, like, for whatever reason, dude, I believed him. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. That's great. And You uh, need that. You so can't do it alone, dude. That's yeah. a, yeah. Yeah, dude, it's impossible. Yeah. Like, completely impossible. Yep. You know? I mean, from my experience, right? Yeah. I have, like, years of, like, trying to do it alone and, like, was incapable. Yeah, because, like, you become your own worst enemy. The little voices in your head, it's a different voice, hour one versus hour 24, you know? Like, that's yeah. a... Yeah. Voice changes. Yeah, dude. <laughs> eh, fuck it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try again later. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. So when was this? When did you get out of jail the last time? Uh, I got out of jail March 6th, 2022, and that is my sobriety date. Not a boy. So. March 6th. That's my sister's birthday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, cool. Shoot, good day. Yeah, great good day. day great day, sister. dude. I got sober. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, and then, yeah, I guess catch me up to what the past couple of years have looked like and um, helping other people and being helped. And has there been uh, temptations to go back to the dark side? I imagine not. Maybe like a not brief so thought. Not so much, dude. Yeah. Like probably like early on, right? Like that, you know. Uh, I mean, like early recovery for anybody, right? Like there's your that obsession's gonna be there for a little bit. Yeah. Right. Um, but I don't know, dude. I think I, I think that probably I got relieved of that obsession, dude. Probably like around like six months sober or something, and like haven't really thought about. Uh, That's bomb. Well, actually, you know what? I can't say I haven't thought about it, right? right. Like I'm sitting here, I'm sharing my experience, and you're dude, thinking you know about I mean? it, like, but I'm that's different than considering it, right? it. Um, dude, I haven't felt like I needed to get high, dude, in a very like probably since about five, six months sober. Hell yeah, know? good for you. Um, What's your, um, what's your take on spirituality and God now? I imagine it's different. Much different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, 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 that's a huge part of recovery. Huge part of like what we're doing. Yeah. Like, what we do. Um, and, uh, I think that was like a big, the biggest hurdle for me. Like the first time I came around, right. Yeah. It's like, uh, dude, I've been violently atheist my entire life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which is probably, like, why I was so, uh, like, where, like, a lot of, like, the selfishness. And, like, yep. A lot of, like, the... the hedonistic... You know, what's the... There's a term for it. Machiavellian? No. No, hedonism. Hedonist. A, that's a good fucking yeah. one for it as well. Yeah. Um, but, like, the selfishness, the self-centeredness, right? And, like, all the, like, self-seeking shit, right? Yep. Um, a lot of that. And, like, my, my ability to, like, uh, set what I'm doing, how what I'm doing affects you aside so easily, right? To like cause these harms yeah. to people in my life, yeah. right? Um, it's like, dude, if I'm atheist, right? Like I believe that like I'm born to die and like everything that happens in between, dude, just doesn't matter. Right, right? nihilism. Yeah. Fucking A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like so um, whatever I take from you, or like whatever I do. It doesn't, do, matter, it doesn't yeah. matter, yeah. Yeah. As long as I get mine. Yeah. Right, as long as I get what I need. Yeah. I'm good. Um, so yeah, dude, I don't, I'm like not going to sit here and tell you like that I found uh, found religion or anything like that. Like I'm still like healthily not, skeptical. <laughs> uh, I mean, like of organized religion, right? Yeah. Right? Like I am of the belief, dude, like that there is a power that's greater than myself. I agree. Right? Yeah. Um, that is greater than us. Yeah. You know? What that looks like, dude, I don't know. Yeah. 
right? Um, there are uh, there are theologists and like philosophers and like dudes that are way fucking smarter than I am, right? Like since long, like earliest times, right? Um, that have lost their minds trying to figure out who or what God is. Yeah, right? exactly. I've lost my mind over way simpler shit. Right? <laughs> like I can't, uh, can't be bothered. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there is a, uh, there's a line in our literature, right, where it says uh, God is either everything, dude, or God is nothing, right? Uh, the decision was ours, right? Like, we couldn't duck the issue. Um, it's everything. Yeah. Right? So I just try and show up, dude, and, like, show up to um, show up to whatever it is I'm doing, dude, right? Like, whatever, you know, my, my work relationships, dude, or, like, my, uh, you know, with my girlfriend or, like, my friendships or, like, my family relationships, like, whatever it is, right? Um, whatever it is I'm doing, dude, I try and show up, dude, with, the un- with that understanding. Yeah. Right? Like, what we're doing now, this is that, right? Yeah, like, I can feel it. Power, yeah, you're here, you know? you know? You're very yeah. present. It's very nice, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, it's cool. And that's, yeah. I remember that being kind of hang up cause I've been to a, a meeting myself and just the first thing out of the mouth is just God. And I was so atheist that I was just like, fuck this, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm out. I'm yeah. gone. Right. <clears throat> I've kind of come around the other side of that. Cause it's like, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. We're just concerned in the matters of like in matters of the spirit. Yeah. Right? Our internal condition. Right. What's been the highlight of your life since uh, getting out, being clean, being a part of the community and helping other people? What are you most proud of since being out? Um, well, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, dude, like life just like up and got good. You know, I can't really like pick and tell you like, dude, this was the best, right? Like, yeah. Dude, it's all been like pretty fucking good. Yeah. You know? It's been like some like, you know, I'm not going to say like there's just been like this solid trajectory upwards, right? Where like I do, I just continue to plateau every day. Right? Yeah. Like shit still gets weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm human. Right? Yeah. Like I'm fucking, but like I'm showing up, dude, like and I'm having that human experience. Yeah. Right? Like. Highs and the lows. And yeah. Like, fuck, yeah, dude, like just. That's great. Just fucking practicing like how to live again. Yeah. You know? How like, did uh, Shorty enter the picture again? Uh. Through like uh like the amends process of like what oh okay yeah you know what I mean yeah yeah um she went to uh she went to prison did her thing got better you know got out kept fucking getting better and staying better dude and like I did my time and like got out that's and beautiful like got better started staying yeah. better you know and like continued to do that and like uh we made our amends to each other and like just kind of started talking and then like just. It's just there, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And, like, the the dynamic of that whole thing, dude, is, like, completely different. Yeah, I bet. I'm trying to picture. I'm just like, what do they do? Eat snacks at night and watch movies and shit? All all wholesome shit, dude? Yeah, Yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, Yeah. Got the apartment (laughs) now. I'm, like, fucking, you know? Uh, Good for you, man. Got a, got a you know a Great Dane. Yes, and, like, let's go. Spoke, yeah, dude. that's a big dog. You go got the work, big dog, dude, and like come home, and fucking, you know, meal prepping and like, yeah. Dude, Are you like, hitting the gym? Uh, I was there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, things have been extremely busy, and like, fuck, can't, sounds like an excuse to me, that brother. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but like, dude, I just uh, like, dude, things are busy, right? Yeah, like, I just for sure. got handed like a full life. Nice. You know? Yeah. Um, so like I do, I try to do, I exercise when I can, not necessarily at the gym. I'll like do like, uh, some like body weights and like calisthenics shit, mm-hmm. or whatever, you know, um, some jail stuff, with, like my, med- you know, my morning meditation and nice. like, that stuff. And yeah. What does that look like? How long are you meditating in the morning? 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do guided or just solo? So, um, it started out with like guided. Yeah. You know, um, I remember the first time I tried, right? Like, was like doing like, like trying like solo dolo. Yeah. Um, and then you're just sitting there with guys, your eyes closed, like, what the fuck am I doing? Dude, yeah. <laughs> I think I made it like 30 seconds, dude, and was like, dude, I'm fucked. Yeah. I'm never, you know what I mean? Just right. like, just getting, uh, uh, dude, like trying to sit quietly with myself, dude, that early on was like fucking going to war. You know? I'm just getting fucking, I close my eyes, dude, I'm just getting fucking. Bombarded, so, dude, yeah, yeah. Dude, with everything, right? Yeah, all the you piece of shit. Fucking, I can't believe you did that. All the losses yeah. and like all the fights, the fuck crimes, do everything, right? And, yeah. Uh, 
just seeing all the people that I hurt, do like all of it, right? Mm. Like, so like it was torture, gnarly, yeah. you know? Um, then like I move into the guided stuff and I'm getting, you know, practicing breathing and, you know, doing all that. And then uh, a guy said something one time, dude, that like, have, you know, one day, right? My phone's going to be dead. Um, I'm not going to have that special pillow, right? Um, the coffee machine's going to be broke. Right, I'm gonna have forgotten to fucking bought a cigarette, you know, bought a pack of cigarettes. I'm not gonna have any smokes, mm -hmm. you know. Shit's not gonna line up, right? And like now, I'm gonna be incapable of meditating, you know. Yeah. Um, I need to strip it down, dude, to its bare bones, right? And like just get good at like sitting quietly with myself. Nice. That's you know? huge. Yeah. yeah. Um. So like that's what I did. I like, took all that away, and uh, now I sit quietly with myself. Do you set a timer? Like a minute turned into two. Yeah. Right. And like two turned into four and then like got, you got yeah. pretty good. Right. And like was able to uh, start like organizing those thoughts, dude. And like being able to sit with some emotions and like uh, learn how to navigate that shit. Yeah. You know, it's, um, it's a wild experience just existing. When oh, you yeah. just sit and breathe, and yeah. you're like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so yeah, much. You know yeah. That's crazy. Um, and like, dude, like that gives me like my entire day back. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's great. It's like if I, I start my day without it, right? Like, uh, like, dude, all I've ever known is fear. Right. Right. Like Just this fear of running out. I've ever yeah. Known, right. And I think that's why I liked, um, why I liked bike riding so much, dude, because it's like the one area in my life, dude, that I was able to like, conquer shut the fear. That off, yeah. Right. I was able to just like shut that fear off for a moment and like, fuck, go through it, dude, and make it to the other side of it and yeah. like have that evidence, dude, that fear is a fucking liar. Yeah. Right. And, uh, so now like, dude, like I, if I start my day off, dude, like without those meditations, you know what I mean? Um, I'm losing my entire day, dude, spent up here, like in the fear. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. For real. You know, like just like a, yep, a it's day a different without vibe. intention, dude, like is just not, yeah, can't do it. You know, I'm happy to hear that. That's great. I haven't been on it. I haven't been on the meditating. No, that's kind of not true. Like I, I have, I just haven't been on waking up early and doing it, but yeah. I'll, I'll go meditating in the cold plunge is something else. Just five minutes goes by like nothing. And I You're do an a animal. little, do a little body scan. Yeah. Body yoga, scan. yoga Nidra has been sick lately. I've been, cause it last year it was just meditation. I would either do it alone or do a 10 minute guided one. But some of the guided ones are so corny and like boho Dude, girl shit. Yeah. It's just like, oh, shut up. So you have, uh, at the end of the day, you, you have the insight timer. Uh, -uh. no, oh, I just did it all on YouTube. Um, Look into the insight timer, dude. It's a really good app for like a lot of cool. good yeah. meditations. Yeah. That's what I was Sam doing. Harris has an app too, but um, yoga Nidra, I had no clue what it was. And then I started doing it. It's like, it's like a perfect 30 minute nap. You, it, um, pretty much meditating but it's guided and it it you do a body scan so you're just paying attention to different parts of your body you start at the top of your head and she's like guiding you through relax your forehead just like and then by the end of it you're thinking about the sole of your foot and you're thinking about specific toes or just like paying attention to that part of your and it just it's a trip and then it's non-sleep deep rest is what it's called and so even though you're not asleep you get the benefits of sleep from that 30 minute session and I was like, yeah this is cool yeah so I've been been on the I'll yoga nidra lately. Yeah, yeah, it's sick. I'll yeah. send you some. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I definitely try to remain like open, you know. Yeah, remain like open minded. It's like some other, some other. Yeah. Thing, you know? What about like actual yoga? You fuck with that? Uh, I I did like give it a shot. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, not. Nah, I've never been that flexible, <laughs> dude. It hurts. You know. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. What's your dog's name? Knox. Knox. Yeah. K N O X. No, uh, just N O X. N O X. Cool. Knox. Yeah. I thought okay. it was with the K too, and I yeah. just like uh, spelt that out to uh, to Erica one day, dude. And I got yelled at for it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just N O X. Just N O X. Sorry, yeah. Knox. <laughs> uh, damn! What a journey! What yeah. a journey you've had. Yeah, it's been wild, man. Well. It hasn't been much of a BMX podcast, but tell me, uh, a bit, yeah, you know, sprinkling you're, in, tell me, you're you're in there. who's your Mount Rushmore, Aaron Maxwell? Mount Rushmore, that's four, right? Yeah, we said four. I asked you that before this. Yeah, um, four bikers. Yeah. 
Uh, dude, I'll give you, give you like two. It's like two of like older riders. I was like always a fucking huge fan of you know Aiken. Yeah. Fan of Mike Aiken, and uh, dude, I was always a big Jeff Slattery fan. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, yeah he's goaded. Yeah, he's sick. Um, and then like probably a little more currently, right, dude? Like Garrett, gotta throw Garrett in there. Um, and Felix, dude. He's sick, dude. Yeah, sick. But it's tough, dude, because like that whole crew, like Jordan, too. Yep. Like, fuck, dude. I don't know, dude. It's tough. There's so much good bike riding. Right For now. real, though. It's insane. It's better than like, ever. Coming back, you know, like coming back to life. Yeah, like, after 2017, like, disappear and then come back in 2022, and they're like, whoa, whoa, yeah. dude, yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. Are you watching BMX videos anytime? Yeah, pretty regularly. Nice. Where yeah. do you go? Just um, YouTube. No, I usually go to hour. Yeah. Yeah, go to hour just BMX. And get like caught just up. Get caught up real yeah. quick, yeah. Um, it's tough to want to stay on top of it. That's why these the lives I've told you about is just so fun because it's like it reminds me of being in the Tempe BMX house and then having the boys over and we all put on a video and talk shit yeah. about it, you know? Yeah, It's the definitely. same feeling because I get that. When I was younger, I would watch BMX videos alone and just obsess over it and want to go try shit. But now I don't have that same, like, mm -hmm. I want to watch BMX videos. But with the boys, it's pretty fun. Yeah, dude. Always <clears throat> always different, dude, with a crew of people. Biking-wise, what do you... Uh, I don't I don't like the word proud, but what, what are you most stoked on in your riding career? Um, State championship. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Uh, dude, I don't know, right? Like, it's a trip that, like, uh, like our first, you know, mediocre, right? Yeah. The first video part that we filmed, right? Like, we got, uh, like that top five nomination. Yeah. Right? Like, Norwood's that was a pretty trip, cool. Right? Yeah. Like, an absolute trip. Um, like, trick wise, dude, like, Chase Bank was, like, yep. the scariest, gnarliest thing I've ever done in my life. I don't know, but, like, that foot, the rail hop at the end of Forever Rolling, too, was mm -hmm. also. Like, very scary, dude. I was going so fast at that thing, yeah. you know? Um, it was a long hop over that rail, yeah. you know? But, uh... Those are good ones. Tell me about the Chase Bank thing a little bit. Dude, that's, uh... Because it was right by my house, I remember. Yeah. And you probably drove <laughs> past uh, it every day to come over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And like, 100%, dude. I was yeah. like, and I remember, uh, walked up and, like, looked at it and, like, dude, that's not much steeper than like a starting hill right you know i can well, you can jump off that thing yeah you know um but yeah i mean like we went we tried it that one time i almost landed on you mm -hmm. you like sitting down like on that parking block and yeah. like i uh um blew my foot off and like tore all those like tendons and like yeah and you're fucked for like, a while fucking yeah. out for a few months um Damn, I wonder if I have that footage anywhere. It's probably on a tape in the laundry room. Definitely on a yeah. tape, dude. It's yeah. all VX. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, dude, we went, we all went out uh, filming that last day, dude, for the party line for the intro. It was like last day of filming. Yeah. You know, you're like, we're filming this party line. That's it. We're done. Yeah. Right? And uh, I think we went to Venezia's afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, it's there, right? Like, it's time. Yeah, let's go. Hell yeah. Fuck one more clip, dude. Let's go get this thing. Who shot and, the uh, photo? Greg? Derek? Uh, Derek. Yeah. yeah. Sick. Yeah, Derek shot the photo. I want that photo. I wonder where it is. Uh, uh, I have it on my phone somewhere. Dude. Yeah. Um, I want the fuck. I want the. I want the ride that it came out in. Yeah, I know, right? That'd yeah. be cool. Fucking a. Lost that, dude. It's a bummer. But uh, what about scariest moment on on the bike and off the bike? Scariest moment. Yeah, I bet you've had some scary fucking moments out on the streets. <laughs> uh, let's see, scariest moment on the bike, dude. Uh, dude, I don't know. Like we could put Chase no up fear. there. We could yeah. put uh, we could put like the forever rolling banger in there. Um, but then like, dude, there's like so many other like crashes like from racing, dude, that were just like scary yeah you know <clears throat> yeah just got broke yeah you know uh so that's a tough one everything you do on the bike is scary so that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about um, off the bike off the bike dude i 
I don't know, man. I don't know that's mine either. Like, dude, yeah, that's yeah, like so it's a tough. tough. One. Yeah. Like I instantly go back to like those five years homeless, right? Yeah. And like try and pull up some of that shit, dude. And like, dude, there's like some high speeds that were pretty scary, dude. Like fucking like, like high speeds. Yeah, like like driving. Mm-hmm. You know, like with the police. And oh shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's that'll just, get you going. You that's know, pretty scary. Yeah, dude, high like, speed just, police chase. Yeah, dude, just gnarly, just gnarly shit. Dude, yeah. You know. Yeah. Someday There's you ought to like share crazy, share crazy. the details, stories of everything, if you can, or if you have any interest in it, because that's that's fucking interesting. You lived life like a movie. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, like, I don't. I probably won't ever like share too much of that stuff, dude. Like, it's because uh, I hate for it to come off like as like it getting glamorized or you know like a flex or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it was not that. Yeah, you, know I mean? like, <laughs> you could share it without it coming that, off like, as a flex. Uh, <coughs> if you uh, could wave a magic wand and get rid of a bike trick, nobody can do this trick anymore. Which one would you take away? Mm. What trick do you see somebody doing? And you're like, fuck that. Bro, I don't know. Um. Probably bar spins, dude. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Fucking Fuck people who bar, can bar spin. spin. Exactly. That's yeah. why, dude, right? Because like, I can't do fucking yeah. do it. Yeah. Solid answer. <laughs> and then what's a trick? It might be the same answer, but what's a trick that you can't do that you never could, but you wish you could? Um, dude, recently, probably. I mean, like, I do. I always wish I could bar spin. Yeah. Um, but like. Recently, dude, like, I'm pretty jealous of nose manuals. Nose manuals are dude, fucking awesome, dude. Look, yeah. <laughs> they just look like they feel so They feel good, incredible, you know yeah. I mean? And it's, like, relatively safe. I love going to a session of Manny Pad and doing nose wheelies. That's, like, good, some old man shit. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Dude, just I think, like, point. I think I went over the bars, like, like, all do all my, like, gnarliest crashes, like, from, like, racing were like over the bars yeah you know so you probably have a real I, yeah, ingrained fear of like going over the feeling, bars yeah dude yeah i don't that's uh, fair that's it, it is uh, spooky going over the bars so do you know what dude maybe i'm just gonna start trying to do nose manuals. let's go yeah, yeah go. cool yeah we're just we're gonna figure out nose manuals now um let's wrap up with what are some goals if any that you have right now what are you gonna what are you working on what's what are you looking forward to um Dude, at the moment, right, like, I'm really trying to stay out of, like, the outcomes. Nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, if I get too caught up in, like... But that can be your goal. You don't... The goal doesn't have to be the outcome. The goal could be the process. So what processes are you enjoying and what are you, like, yeah. focusing on? Um, at the moment, like, what I'm focusing on, dude, is, like, uh, dude, like, just trying to be here. Yeah. Right? Like, yep. Just being, like, here. Yeah. Right now. Right, yep. like not, um, not in your head thinking about when you're gonna yeah, go dude, get like the not thing. Not worried yeah. about like what's gonna fucking happen tomorrow or like what I'm gonna have in five years. Yeah, or what, you know what I mean. Yeah, um, like dude, like that's where anxiety lives. Yeah, you know, like that's when shit starts getting weird. Um, thinking about the future. Yeah, you know yep. what I mean. So like I'm like my focus at the moment, dude, is like just like showing up, um, you know, to work or fuck whatever it is I have going on for that day, dude, and like. Being there, doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what's it, up. That's it, dude. Right. And like, um, whatever comes, dude, right? Like, whatever I end up with, uh, I'm good with. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Just like, or at least like, I hope I'm good with. Yeah. Like, that's the ideal, right? It's like learning how to be good, dude, with just be like, just with whatever comes. Yep. You know? What's a lesson that you've learned throughout all of this that you would share with somebody? Um, Don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meditate. Um, yeah, dude, I don't know. There's like a lot of stuff, right? Like, yeah. Like, if you need help, dude, ask for help. Yeah. Right? Which is easy, harder, easier said than done, especially because yeah, being, being in there yeah. and you're not. Uh, it's an interesting, interesting thing. Yeah. And like, dude, like you don't have to, like your life doesn't have to be in like shambles to like need to ask for help. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Just fucking just ask for it. 
you know. What a beautiful thing. I enjoyed this conversation. Is there anything else that we need to cover before we wrap it up? No, dude. Thank you for thank you for being so open and honest and it's it's about time we got this done. Yeah, dude. Thanks yeah. for asking me to do this, man. I appreciate yeah. you. Let's go. All the memories, dude. It's, it's crazy to think about. It all yeah, comes dude, back when you're fun. talking about me filming. I'm like, dude, we've spent fucking thousands of hours together just yeah. fucking <clears throat> that's, yeah, and that's a and that's like a deep bond, like you know. A long yeah. time, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, dude, this was really fun. Yeah, dude, like I've watched you push through like, that fear barrier thousands of times or hundreds of times. Like, that's so cool. It's funny how life works, dude. Yeah, <laughs> and here we go. Here we are, dude. All right, cool. Later, nerds. All right, my friends. I think that was a that was a fun conversation. So leave a comment. Let me know what you got from it. Leave Aaron some love and support. You heard the part where he said that the one comment that Clay left while he was locked up saying free Amex, like left a big impact. So comments can do some shit. So give Aaron some love in the comments and uh, I'll see you next week.